The second season of DC Universe's Titans has come to a close. While the finale episode Nightwing doesn't end on the cliffhanger the first season did, it also doesn't fail to raise more questions than it answers. Corey's powers prove less reliable over the season's last couple of episodes, and by Nightwing, they disappear completely. She's shocked to learn she's lost any immunity to bullets when Deathstroke shoots her early in the episode. She hasn't been able to use her energy weapon since a previous episode, and her brief and embarrassingly futile attempt to put a dent in Superboy with her fist proves that her abilities have completely left her. So far, though, we have no idea what the cause of her power loss is. Whatever has drained Corey's powers from her, Blackfire certainly seems like the most likely culprit. It isn't clear how Corey's sister could have made it happen, but evil alien queens aren't known for their lack of resources. The final scene of Nightwing, in which we see Blackfire arrive on Earth, suggests that she has big plans for her sister. Another possibility is that her power loss is psychosomatic, like the fluctuation of Spider-Man's powers in 2004 Spider-Man 2. Since the beginning of Titan's second season, Corey has learned her sister has stolen her throne, her family has been killed, and finally, Corey is forced to kill a former lover. Honestly, she probably has way more stress than Peter Parker ever did. As soon as it was confirmed at the end of the 11th episode that Jericho was alive, we've wondered exactly how Dick Grayson planned on saving his old friend. Killing Deathstroke would presumably kill Jericho as well, unless he had another body to jump into. Rose solves the problem in Nightwing by offering her body up to Jericho to inhabit before finally killing their sinister father. Now that we know how Jericho is saved, we're left asking exactly how this brother-sister pair is going to live with their shared body. From what little we see of Jericho's time in his father's body, it seems clear Deathstroke never willingly gave up control to his son, whereas Rose lets her brother emerge right away so he can talk to Dick. This drastic shift for both characters isn't going to be easy. For now, Jericho is likely grateful to have any time in the world at all, but soon tensions are bound to rise between him and Rose. One moment in Nightwing that likely raised a lot of questions for fans is the supposed death of Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke. Rose runs her father through with her sword, and Dick confirms the assassin's death. Is he... Dead? Yeah. Not so fast, Dick. In Season 2's penultimate episode, we see the extent of Rose's healing powers. She puts the muzzle of a gun to her hand and blows a hole through it, only to have the flesh heal moments later. Rose inherited these healing powers from her father, so you would think it would take more than a sword to the chest to take him out for good. Perhaps it's as simple as Slade's healing powers not being quite as powerful as they are in the comics. But we're just not convinced that we've seen the last of him. Remember, this isn't the first time the Titans thought he was dead. I thought he, he was dead. Yeah, we all did. But he's alive and well in San Francisco. Maybe the Titans version doesn't have a healing factor as beefy as Wolverine's or Deadpool's, but a sword through the chest still seems far too easy of a way to die for a man who single-handedly killed a handful of Themis Kieran warriors before beating the tar out of Donna Troy earlier in Season 2. Some of the most tragic circumstances to befall any of the Titans are forced upon Gar in Season 2. For the past few episodes, Gar's been suffering from a mental reconditioning courtesy of Mercy Graves and Cadmus Laboratories. When the right piece of classical music is played, Gar shifts into his tiger form and kills anyone unlucky enough to be nearby. In Nightwing, Rachel is able to cut through Cadmus' conditioning with her powers and bring Gar back to sanity, but will it stick? Okay, Garth. That was not cool. Gar's brainwashing wasn't the sort of demonic possession that many of the other Titans had suffered at the hands of Trigon in the season premiere. It could be that Rachel's powers healed the damage that was done to Gar completely, but it could also be that she was only able to break him out of that particular violent episode. It seems likely that no one will know for sure if Gar is free and clear from Cadmus' conditioning until the next time he hears that same classical music. Unfortunately, if Gar does still prove susceptible to the trigger, with Rachel and Themis Kira, the Titans may find themselves unable to stop their friend from going on a rampage. In Season 2's penultimate episode, Jason Todd does not react well to the revelation that Rose was originally meant to be Deathstroke's mole among the Titans. In spite of Rose assuring Jason her feelings for him changed her loyalties, it's too much for the already troubled young Robin to bear. He leaves Rose and is completely absent from the two climactic fights in Nightwing. We don't see him until he appears on a motorcycle when the Titans transfer Donna Troy's body to the Themis Kirans. Presumably, both as a final show of respect to his former teammate 
as well as a way to let Dick know not to expect to see him anytime soon. But is he gone for good? Jason Todd has a rocky history in the comics and animated films. The second boy to wear Robin's costume eventually dies at the hands of the Joker and returns later as a Red Hood. Jason. Yes. We have no way of knowing if Jason will go down similar roads in Titans, but while Dick and Bruce might show the minimum of respect for his decisions, it seems unlikely they won't at least keep tabs on him, if not outright try to bring him back to the fold. Donna Troy's death after the battle with the brainwashed Superboy and Nightwing came as a surprise for everyone, although it's fair to say that nobody was more shocked than Donna herself. But what we've seen from Donna would suggest she should be able to survive the injury that kills her. Moments before, Donna proves to be the only member of the Titans able to actually trade blows with Connor. Though she clearly doesn't win the fight, a person surviving even a couple of unrestrained blows from someone with the power of Superman would suggest they don't die easy. It could be that Donna's death is a setup for the character's return sometime in Season 3 or beyond. Rachel leaves for Themyscira specifically with the goal of finding a way to bring Donna back. And it wouldn't be the first time the character was rescued from the Land of the Dead. The Donna Troy of the comics was believed killed in the 2003 miniseries Titans Young Justice Graduation Day, only for that to be a fake out. She came back to the Titans in a 2005 series whose title might very well end up being the name of a season 3 Titans episode, The Return of Donna Troy. Throughout Titans' second season, we see Rachel's powers manifest in lots of unpredictable ways. We see her unintentionally hurt both herself and Gar in her sleep with it. Perhaps most shockingly, in Fallen, Rachel's abilities, without her knowledge or intent, bring a stone gargoyle to life that hunts down a new friend's abusive father. By the end of Nightwing, we learn the summons that Rachel, Corey, Donna, and Dawn received to meet Bruce Wayne at a diner in Nevada didn't come from the real Bruce. And everything Corey has seen leads her to believe Rachel somehow unconsciously made it all happen. At the same time, the season 2 finale sees Rachel's powers evolve to the point where she can use them to heal. She wakes Gar from his mental conditioning, and with the touch of her hand, heals Corey's gunshot wound. She seems to think she may actually be able to bring Donna Troy back from the dead and boards the plane to Themyscira in hopes of doing just that. So what's going on with Rachel's powers? All we know for sure is that Rachel's father is defeated long before she has a chance to learn the true limits of her abilities. Themyscira might be the perfect place for Rachel to learn more. In the flashback episode Aqualad, the OG titan Aqualad dies at Deathstroke's hands. In Jericho, we learn that Aqualad wasn't Slade Wilson's real target. It's revealed that Jillian, the older Themyscirian museum curator, who seems to be part benefactor and part mentor to Donna Troy, was Slade's quarry. Before his fateful battle with Dick Grayson, that ends with Jericho's presumed death, Deathstroke makes good on his contracts and gets rid of Jillian. What we never learn is exactly why Jillian's head was on the chopping block. It isn't difficult to imagine that a Themis Kieran like Jillian has made enemies over the years, but we don't get any specifics. What's even more curious is that when Wintergreen first gives Slade the details of the contract in Aqualad, he describes it as easy. The idea of targeting any Themis Kieran and describing the job as easy is insane. Lex Luthor has yet to make an appearance in Titans beyond pictures of him as a child, but Superman's arch nemesis still has a powerful presence in the show's second season. In the episode Connor, Superboy learns his DNA is a combination of Luthor's and Superman's. The young hero visits Luthor's elderly father in Smallville, and it doesn't take long before we learn Luthor is behind the experiment that created Connor. Toward the end of Nightwing, Mercy Graves is more than a little concerned to learn Luthor is on the phone waiting to hear about her failure. Mr. Luther. It seems like Lex Luthor has been groomed to be for Season 3 what Bruce Wayne was to Season 2. While there's no confirmation as of yet that Luthor will appear in Titan's third go-around, it doesn't seem likely that the billionaire would allow his creation, Superboy, to remain in the company of his greatest enemy's allies. Obviously, Titans is about the Titans, and the integrity of the show would suffer if suddenly Aquaman and Flash started regularly showing up on the series. Still, considering the events of Season 2, the question has to be asked. Exactly where is the Justice League and why aren't they getting more involved? Oh no.
By the end of Nightwing, the history of the Titans has seen the deaths of two sidekicks, Aqualad and Donna Troy. Another sidekick, Jason Todd, is off the grid. Wonder Woman must be well aware that the same deathstroke the Titans struggled with this season is the one who murdered a Themis Kieran sisters for money years earlier. And then there's Superman, who by now must know that a young man who is emerging of his DNA and Lex Luthor's exists and has gone on a number of rampages in San Francisco. So where are they? At the very least, how could Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Superman not get more involved in the lives of the Titans? Maybe Bruce Wayne acts as a buffer between the League and the Titans, and off-screen he might be urging his fellow Leaguers to not interfere. But particularly with what we know of Wonder Woman's warrior sense of honor, the notion she would allow so many fellow Themyscirans to fall without getting involved more directly seems strange. Eh, you know what? Maybe Dick just told them all to stay away. You know how he can be. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the bell so you don't miss a single one.